Tales of the Valiant is a new tabletop role-playing game developed by Cobalt Press to replace Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. Back in December 2022, up until sometime in January 2023, it was urgent that somebody replaced 5e because Wizards of the Coast was claiming it had the right to control who could publish or even homebrew content for it. There was a monumental community backlash that forced Wizards of the Coast to back down from that specific course of action, and for many people it felt like the battle was over. The 5e rules remain an irrevocable community asset now, so why bother replacing them? The battle isn't over quite yet, though, and there are three good reasons the 5e rules still need to be replaced. Reason 1. Wizards of the Coast hasn't changed its goal. It's only changed its strategy. Instead of force, they're relying on attrition. Their goal is to kill 5e and replace it with 6th edition, a digital first, possibly digital only edition of D&D that they can monetize well over what is required. Game rules last basically forever. Once you have the idea, they're out there, they don't go away. People still play D&D 2nd Edition right out of the book. It works really well. As someone who does that sometimes, I can attest to that. On the other hand, not everyone plays 2nd Edition. The meta of a game moves on for several reasons, and Wizards of the Coast knows this. First of all, even a robust game system that everyone loves, like the 5e rule set, eventually wants an update. Ten years from now, we'll all see something about 5e that we don't like anymore, and we'll homebrew a solution, and it'll be fine, right? Except that when a new player comes to the table, they won't recognize the game. What's written in the SRD will have become outdated based on the way people are actually playing it. That's what it means to have support for a game. Someone needs to be standing by watching how gamers are playing, and then decide to update the rules to match. Because 5e is now officially in the Creative Commons, literally anybody can do that now. So technically we don't need Tales of the Valiant, right? Well, not so fast. When you play an RPG several times a week, you want to have a nice copy of the rulebook for convenience alone, if not because you like how it looks on your bookshelf. Cobalt Press is an experienced publishing company, and at least for now, they're a great candidate to be the centralized source of rules support. Reason number two. Wizards of the Coast knows that as long as they abandon 5e and push their 6th edition content, gamers are likely to migrate. As new players find the hobby, they'll naturally buy into 6th edition because that's the current edition. Wizards claims, for now at least, it's foolish to trust them at this point, but they're claiming that 6th edition will remain compatible with 5th edition forever. But the more content they push to their digital platform, the less that's going to matter. To buy an adventure, you'll have to log into their digital platform, and once you're there, you may as well just play 6th edition, honestly. Wizards expertly engineered a schism in the D&D community when they illegally attempted to revoke the open gaming license, and it's in their interest to split it further. They're designing a community for themselves of people who can afford or who are willing to use fancy digital-only gaming resources and those who cannot or will not. Wizards isn't going to refer to rules and tables as they appear in 5th edition. They'll talk in terms of 6th edition. They're obviously going to add content and rules to 6th edition eventually, and while it may be technically compatible with 5th edition, it's going to functionally be inaccessible to 5th edition players without a purchase of 6th edition and the digital environment that that entails. In other words, left to their own devices, Wizards would starve 5th edition of content and players until there's just nobody running 5th edition games anymore. That's their business model, it has to be. They have to build a paying community for themselves because, for whatever reason, the huge worldwide community of 5th edition players just wasn't enough. It seems counterintuitive to most of us, but as long as they can build a community just for themselves and then charge that community premium prices to participate, they can, and probably will, make as much money, possibly more, than the passionate 5th edition community that they used to have, but not all of whom were paying quote-unquote enough. They don't have to take 5th edition away from us like they were trying to do at first, as long as they just let it die while at the same time claim that 5th edition is still alive in its digital-only 6th edition. Cobalt Press has a healthy community already. They kickstart and get funded for lots and lots of different books, from their Midgard World books to their Tome of Beasts, 
to some really great adventures. I think it makes sense to join them in building a community around Tales of the Valiant. 3. The company matters. Wizards of the Coast is a business. It's a business I used to want to stay in business because the company produced, at the time, a lot of great content that I enjoyed. I spent a lot of money on 5th edition because I wanted everyone at Wizards of the Coast to continue their amazing work. In normal life, like, you know, in personal life, that kind of relationship is supposed to mean something, you know? Y you know somebody, you know their history, and barring any major emergency or crisis, you expect them to just continue sort of being themselves without any kind of major drastic change. In the multi-million, or sorry, billion dollar business world, though, that's not a relationship, what I've just described. It's a transaction, and it lasts for exactly as long as it takes for the money to change hands. A business has no memory. A business doesn't know what it has done historically, or what its customers expect of it, or even why its customers give it money for a product, because a business is the thing. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a money-making machine. This is because any staff member, or even senior executive, can be replaced in any moment, and decide to do something totally different than what it's done before. We like to imagine that business people analyze past data and try to meet expectations. We sometimes think they have to do that or else they'll like stop making money, but that's not how it works. If the right person in a business thinks they have a different way to make the same or more money, as the business has made, has made in the past, then the business can and will change course, and it doesn't matter whether you're personally disappointed in it. Cobalt Press is also a business. There's no guarantee that Cobalt Press won't change its business practices 10 years from now. In fact, more than likely, it will change. That's how things go. However, in this case, the two companies have been running in parallel since the early 2000s. They're pretty easy to compare to one another. When Wizards of the Coast released D&D 4th Edition under a restrictive anti-consumer and anti-competitive license, Cobalt Press published content for Pathfinder under the open gaming license. When it was evident that Pathfinder was getting the lion's share of players, Wizards of the Coast released 5th Edition in a surprise return to the open gaming license. We all fell for it, I did. Cobalt Press started publishing content for 5e, but it continued to support Pathfinder until it was evident that the market had mostly shifted to 5e. When Wizards of the Coast tried to illegally dismantle the open gaming license, Cobalt Press joined the Orc Initiative and announced Project Black Flag, which became Tales of the Valiant. Both companies are actually pretty consistent. Wizards consistently tries to undermine its community with aggressively anti-consumer policies, interspersed with hollow enthusiasm for inclusivity and collaboration. Cobalt Press serves its community based on data and feedback. They're funded largely by crowdfunding efforts, so they get direct feedback on what its community wants. They very literally collaborate with the community through design competitions that get included in their products, like Tome of Beasts and the Labyrinth cosmology of Tales of the Valiant. Life is about change and anything can happen, but if I'm going to spend my money on something, it's the least I can do to starve the company that's broadcasted, at first overtly and then subversively and then overtly again, its anti-consumer intentions since 2008. Wizards of the Coast is begging me not to give them money. I'm happy to do that. Cobalt Press doesn't get any more of my trust than any other business does, but until they prove themselves unworthy of my support, I'm going to buy Tales of the Valiant and add it to my Cobalt Press book collection. Thanks for watching.